In this presentation, we're going to talk about an idea called recursion. Uh, recursion is a very powerful technique for thinking about a process. You can use it for in a lot of different ways. One is to simulate a loop. Um, there are others too, and, and we'll get a look at a couple as we go along. The basic idea of recursion is that a function or procedure calls itself. Now, as with a while loop, there's a danger of an infinite recursion. So there has to be something, uh, some kind of test for stopping it. And something like a parameter of the function or procedure has to change between calls. So um, one way to get started looking at recursion is to notice that recursion can mimic a while loop. So here I have a while loop that um, does a multiplication table and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So we have a loop control variable called j. We started out at 1. And while j is less than or equal to max, uh, what we do is um, we print whatever our item is as a, in a string form, the time sign, uh, the value of j, the equal sign, and then the um, actual product of num m and j, uh, that's m in numerical form, uh, formatted as a string. So we print one row of the multiplication table, and then we increment j, and we keep doing this until we get up to max, which is usually 12 in our examples. Okay, now here's a recursive procedure that does the same thing. So I'm calling it recurmult, and it has three arguments. Um, the number version of m, the string version of m, and a third argument which is going to play the role of j, and initially it's 1. So here's the code, and you can see that in the uh, names of the parameters themselves, the formal parameters. J, this, this third one is actually called j. So here's our test. If j is less than or equal to max, um, so notice if j is bigger than max, nothing happens and we just return. But if j is less than or equal to max, which is a global variable in this case, uh, then what we're going to do is print that same line of the multiplication table, string version of m, the x, the multiplication sign, the string version of j equals, and then multiply the two num m and j and change it to a string and print that. So one line of the multiplication table. And then we recursively call the same procedure with the same first two arguments, but now instead of j, we have j plus 1. So we call it with 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, until we get up to max. And each time we're printing a line and then doing the recursive call. When we finally get to max, we are just finished. And at that point, all the calls return. So, OK, this is going over the same thing. Um, we start with j equal 1 and print the line for multiplying by 1. Then we do the next call with j equal 2. Then we do j equal 3 and so on until we get up to a value of j bigger than max. And in that case, we just return. Now, this is not a simple concept. So let's look at a very simple example. Uh, sometimes it actually makes sense to define a quantity recursively. And here's an example where we're defining the sum of the first n numbers. So we say recursively, while well, the sum of the number 1 by itself is 1, and if it's a number that's bigger than 1, we're going to take that number and add it to the sum of the remaining numbers uh, that are smaller. So sum of 2 would be 2 plus sum of 1, which is 1. Sum of 3 would be 3 plus sum of 2, which is 2 plus 1, and so on. And this is as opposed to writing it this way with the dot, 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 which, you know, who knows what that's supposed to mean. So this avoids the ambiguity of the dot, 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 and it just gives you uh, a definite definition. Now, when you have a recursive definition like this, there's a couple of questions you have to be able to answer. First of all, if you know how to compute the answer for n minus 1 and possibly other smaller values, how do you compute it for n? So in, here, in our example, that was this part of the definition that says s of n equals s of n minus 1 plus n. And the other question is, how does the recursion stop? How do we hit bottom or get to the end or whatever you want to call it? And in our example, we have s of 1 equals 1, which is how we stop. 
Okay, so if we want to think of this as a recursive computation, um, it will have code like this. If n is less than or equal to 1, and of course here we'd never expect a number less than 1, but just in case somebody calls it with a weird parameter, we'll catch it. So um, in that case, we return the value 1. Otherwise, we set sum of n to be n plus sum of n minus 1, exactly like the recursive definition. And um, uh, as we were illustrating before, you know, if I call it with 5, then I'm going to get 5 plus sum of n of 4, which is 4 plus sum of n of 3, which is 3 plus sum of n of 2. By the time I work my way down, I will have 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, uh, which equals 15. And here it is all laid out for you. Once we get down to 1, that returns a 1, which then completes this one. This returns a 3, which completes this one. That returns 6 and completes this one. And then we get 10, and then we get 15. So going back up. Now compare this to a while loop that does the same thing. Here, here's a reasonable while loop. So we have j equals n and sum equals 0. And do while j is greater than or equal to 1, sum equals sum plus j, and j equals j minus 1. Now this works almost exactly the same way as the recursive function that we looked at. But um, I think it's pretty, the, the recursion is clearer in this case. Uh, and it's plain to see that it computes the correct value. So coming up with the loop that we wrote is not that easy sometimes, depending on the situation, compared to coming up with the recursive function. And its structure is different. And finally, I should mention, there's also a closed form. There's a formula for this sum, uh, which can be written like this, n times n plus 1 over 2. But those closed forms can be hard to find. But if you have one, that's another option. Now over here, I actually have um, a spreadsheet that implements this. Um, what I'm going to do is put, let's put 5 in here and push the button. And there's the 15. Uh, with 6, I should add 6 to that, right? So I should get 21, and I do. And you can play with this. If you go over to the developer and look at Visual Basic, then you can see that this is exactly um, the code that we were looking at. So we read the value of n, and we call recurse sum of n, and then print out the result we get. Uh, this is where we're returning the function value. and um, Here's our code, and it's exactly, uh, well, here I chose to stop at 0. So if n is less than or equal to 0, we return 0. Otherwise, it's n plus recurse sum of n minus 1. If you work it out, you'll see that it gives the same answers as we were getting. OK. Now, um, one thing to be very careful about with recursions is that they can become infinite, just like a while loop, if you don't give a way to stop. So the test to see if you're done is typically, and should be, the first thing the recursive function does. Uh, the other thing to say is that recursion may use may re more resources than a loop, and it may not be possible to a, do a very large recursion. And that's because of all those unfinished recursive calls that are piling up, waiting for the bottom to get hit and then to create the final answer by uh, returning from each one to, to get to the first one. Okay, so again, that can use quite a bit more resources than just doing a simple loop. There's actually a style of programming that replaces all the loops with recursions, and it replaces assignment statements with parameter or argument associations. This can be a very clear and interesting way of programming, and once you get the knack of doing it, it can result in very clear and concise programs. There are languages, languages, programming languages, especially designed to support this style. Probably the best known one is Scheme, but there's plenty of others. So if you hear about Scheme, that's what the big deal is. It's all functional programming. Now, um, I want to get into another example, which is Fibonacci numbers, but that will be the subject of the next video.